The nation's number one talk station, 99.3 Nigeria in Grace. 7.32 from our studios this morning. Welcome to the second part of Dailies today. Uh, guess what? You can watch us live on Facebook and on YouTube. Nigeria Info 99.3 is how you can join us virtually this morning. Nigeria Info 99.3. So Lagos, you're welcome to the show. I'm Sharif Quatri. I'm Jimmy Disso. Good morning. Let's get started. Um, we're going to start with uh, this story here from the Vanguard newspaper. Um, it's on page five of the Vanguard. Tinubu names new service chiefs, dissolves boards of MDAs. Mm, Sharif, thank you very much. Sir. Yes, um, okay, I'm sure most of you know the names. I mean, so I might not just want to repeat it uh, so that we can have enough time to look at the issues that have uh, the consequent issues. I, I heard you this morning, Sheriff, and I heard the concerns of people and those who, who, who otherwise didn't feel any concern. Number one, let me say that the reaction of most people this morning was the same reaction that I got yesterday when I saw the list. Um, and, and that is, where is the balance in all this? I didn't know that the the gentleman, the chief of naval staff, uh, Ogala, I didn't know he was from the southeast, the Ogala that we all know that is close to the president. We thought he was from Lagos. His first name is Mabatunde. His second name is Kwame. That's Ghana. So the, in that light, mm. to be honest with you, in fact, I thought he was related to him. He was probably his brother. And, and I think those concerns are genuine, um, that there must be balance. We shouldn't be ashamed of it, unlike one caller, who one lady who called in this morning and was trying to to play down the sensitivity, you know, and was a, a bit condescending in her use of language. You see, what it is is what it is. All over the world now, because resources are thin, everybody wants balance achieved. There's a big fight going on in America. That's what led to Black, Ma Black Lives Matter and so on and so forth. It's a sensitive issue. If you go to TikTok, every day people are talking about balancing and balancing and balancing. So the and the problem actually came from the media office of the presidency, which which I can tell you authoritatively needs an overhaul. Uh, that's the f one of the jobs that Dele Alake has to do. I'm on their mailing list. There's hardly a day that I don't get a mail from them on the subject, and about 30 minutes later I get another mail talking about correction. Anybody who's on the mailing list will tell you that. Oh, correction, sorry about caption, correction about this and, and correction about that. It needs to be tidied up. What I'm saying so is what you and I discussed this morning, Sheriff, that as soon as the names were announced, you know, the, their states of origin and whatever should have come out, you, you, you know, I don't want to use the word very fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to show the way. So that, so that people's sensitivities are... Look, there are thin resources all over the world. Everybody wants to be fairly treated. And I, I, don't, think, I don't think anybody would come. And I was very angry with the lady, young lady for that matter, talking to everybody in a condescending manner, uh, uh, um, you, you know, making derogative statements to, 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 to people in the southeast. Look, it's the politicians that actually led us to all this. It's the politicians, and specifically it's the APC that led us to all this. In the beginning, mm -hmm. the bio nono gas of this world led, led us to where we are now. Fair enough, you know. But okay, having said that, let me go back to the main issue. Before I, I think I don't know. I don't know about these people. Um, there's somebody coming in, in at nine who is a military person and, and can easily tell you their strengths and weaknesses. So as far as, far as I'm concerned, for me, I would assume that any major general can be a service chief. If you've gotten to if you've gotten to major general and you are not a service chief, then you don't have a problem. The army or the navy or the air force or whatever has a problem. Um, so we have the announcement. Um, other announcements also came out. You had um, apart from the service chiefs, you had the the army brigade of guards or not so yeah. um, is the commander uh, uh, Abiodun Yusuf is the 7th seven, seven Guards Battalion Asokoro. Um, well, the military guard will sort out all these uh, names here. And you have Ask Akin, Akin Beshote. 
some of these names, Olumide Akimbe Sote, okay, is 176 Guards Battalion, and so on and so forth. I'm seeing a hint of a personal interest in some of these appointments, these military appointments. I'm seeing a hint in that. I'm not talking about the service chiefs now. And I think that the, the, the president, you know, is also thinking of his own safety. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh, which is mm -hmm. valid. Mm -hmm. Because he's skewed towards the southwest. I mean, let's, let's call it spade a spade. Uh, but we will let that slide. Uh, because the man... And don't forget, don't forget um, that there's still the court case and there's still the fear of what might happen, uh, what could, uh, hopefully not, uh, happen. And therefore... He, you know, he will be most inclined to want to put his loyalists. Mm -hmm. uh, Adisa Balausman made made the list. Uh, she's special advisor, policy coordination. Hannah to Musa is special advisor, culture and entertainment economy. That's a new one on me. Culture and entertainment economy. Uh, there's Senator Abdullahi Abubakar Gumel, who is SSA National Assembly. There's Olan Waju Kule Ibrahim, who is SSA. National Assembly, and so on and so forth. In the other announcements, at a glance, I don't see any representation of the Southeast, and I think whether we like it or not, we must keep insisting on balance. Uh, we must also realize that Nigeria is not, is not, a, um, is not a, what do you call these small companies, these companies that are not limited liabilities. It's not a one-man business. Mm. Nigeria is a limited liability with loads of shareholders whose interests have to be taken. We have no apologies for it. Do not allow yourself to be cowed by those who think that you are making a force. I'm talking to in any form, any manner. You must fight for proper representation. It's valid. If some people don't like it, too bad. And I think fair is fair. If we don't achieve balance, what it just means... Look, let me give you an example of what life is, uh, life is like. Sometimes you're on an aircraft and they tell you that, oh, Mr. Disu, could you please get up from that seat and move to that other seat until after takeoff? Mm -hmm. Why do they do that? For balance. If you don't have a balance, you will have turbulence. So, well, I wish Nigeria luck. Here we go again. There will be much, much more um, announcements to be made, and I hope a better balance will be put in place. Let's go take a look at a couple of stories in the punch. Yes, sir. You seek someone who lose intervention on abandoned projects. We seek someone who lose intervention in many things. I've been struggling, fighting. People have been bothering me on Twitter. I've been fighting, calling on the Lagos State Governor to please, please, please do something about this traffic, the road constructions going on. Not only has nothing been done, it's been quite impolite of the government not to respond to these things. Because most of them, they are directed at the governor through Twitter. And, and I don't think he would pretend that he hasn't seen them. I think we need to tell him that if for, if for any reason life is this uncomfortable for our citizens, the least you can do is to explain to them why. We haven't had such an explanation. We've been totally ignored. But we'll keep at it. We'll keep at it. We can't afford to wait like this until the next election comes when everybody will be scoring to impress, to impress us all. So we, we will keep at it. Uh, we'd like more people who feel concerned to express their concerns, you, you know, about traffic, about the roads. And, and, and let's put, look, we know that construction must go on, but we must have some planning. So let's go that route again. We would like to know when is a, when is a coal bridge going to be opened, you know, because of the mess we have in, in Ijora. The tankers are back on the road all the way from Apapa to Western Avenue. Family demands justice for slain Lagos Corp. Uh, for slain Lagos Corp and tackle Nigeria Navy. NDLEA have arrested so, so many people. Here we go again, uh, um, Sheriff. Family defiles 10 year old girl in Kaduna mm. building. Mm. There must be something, you know, in, mm. in this. Uh, village vigilantes kill two hoodlums. NAFTAC arrests Kaduna man selling drugs with expired license. Uh, Lagos State Government comes down on alcohol sale at motor parks. I hope they will succeed. I just hope they will succeed. But I've been hearing this since I was in uni university. Authorities always want to clamp down on selling alcohol, paraga and all these things. Mm. It's, it's going to be tough. It will need more of educating them than trying to get them uh, arrested. 
Bayasa understood this Lagos procurement process. Uh, well, I hope they, they, they learn just the, the legal side. The things that go on behind the scenes, I hope it's kept away from them. So we will look pretty support for NIS on passport processing. And that is the news for today. Yep. So we're going to, again, um, go to stay with the punch, rather, and um, take this story here. FG implements 7.5% VAT on diesel. Uh, Nigerians kick. Oh, yes, we will kick. Um, you take away, because it's coming to PMS and it's coming to various other things. You, you, you take away the subsidy, you, you now tax us further. Uh, electricity is going to go up. I'd like to call on the president, sir, you have to sacrifice a lot of people around you that people perceive have, have the part of the national money in, in their pockets. Meaning that a lot of those, your friends and associates who people are almost sure could swear that they've been involved in corrupt practices have to be brought to book. Otherwise, how do you tell us to sacrifice when people are still putting their hands in the cookie jar and blatantly, blatantly, you, you, you know, exhibiting this ill-gotten wealth? That applies, that applies to your fellow politicians. It applies to the traditional rulers who keep coming back and forth to ask for 50% of security vote and things like that. It applies to people around you, some of your quote-unquote friends and associates. You must be able to sacrifice them in the first instance. Because if you are going to be telling Nigerians to sacrifice, then the ones that, the mon our money that has been stolen certainly must be brought back to ease our burden. So that is where I'm, what I'm thinking of this morning, that uh, to, to say, Mr. President, all these things, you know, we are happy. Some of the announcements you are making, the measures, Nigerians are backing you. But there will be a limit. There will be a limit. Before you will be taxing us to the death, some of us will be insisting that we want to know where all our money has gone. And it's a valid question. It's a valid statement. Uh, it's a very, very valid statement. And that is where people's activism should be. Speak up. Speak up when, when this, I didn't say do anything, but at least, at the very least, speak up to, for us to achieve a balance. If you don't, if you keep quiet about some of these things going on, you will suffer for it. That's where we are today. When a lot of people, you know, suspected that there was something going wrong with the subject or whatever, everybody was complicit. Who is facing it today now? It's us. So whilst, you know, I'd like the government to go slow with this idea of taxes, the burden as it is, is killing. And I don't believe that subsidies are bad. The problem we had with the petroleum subsidy, over and above everything, was implementation. And we can't say because the implementation is warped, therefore nothing, nothing to help citizens in this country, in health, in other areas. Okay, so that's, that's, you know, that, that's my take on, on, on this. Did you want to add anything? Not at all. Okay. I was just going to say that. Um, and you don't want to add, but wait, you want to wait. say. I just, I just, <laughs> I just wanted to say that. Um, well, it's is legal, it's lawful because that's what is contained in the Petroleum Industry Act. Uh, that's what the president just did. Um, so yeah, maybe the timeliness. Yeah, that could have been a major consideration on the part of the president. Um, because I mean, look, you just removed the subsidy on petrol. Now you're adding 7.5% on top of diesel, which means that for those who are saying, okay, so diesel, the, this thing does not affect us, this thing on petrol does not affect us, diesel that moves most of the goods, most of because diesel actually moves most of things, mm -hmm. which means that the rail service that people are using now as an alternative will most likely go up. The rail, the um, train fee will most likely go up with 7.5% um, tax added to it. Uh, and some other good stuff as as well. The pr their prices would go up as yeah. well. So yeah, that's basically the consequence of this. Maybe the timeliness. Well, well, well. Look, the, the law is one thing. The law, unfortunately, in Nigeria, deals with people figuratively. It doesn't look at the human aspect. As at the last count, at eleven a.m. yesterday, fifteen people had asked me for money. As at eleven a.m. Eleven a.m. You were counting. I was counting. Why were you counting? Just for the records, you, you know, as at 11 a.m., even this morning, as I woke up on, on Facebook, I got somebody else again asking me for 5K. And if these people, if you know who, who, who these people are, we are in serious trouble. Mm. Yes, we are. 
So I we mean, need no, we, no doubt we also we always need we also need to look at the human aspect of these things. What is what exactly is doable? It's gotten to a point that just have been squeezed to a point where life is almost coming out of them. You can't cook, you can't buy uh, prepared food. Everything is expensive. So prices um, have hit the roof. Uh, when I saw this news yesterday, uh, and I have been. I think I will treat this, I'll remove one of the topics that I have for next week. Yes. Because I'm looking at how this government wants to run the government without borrowing. We are already in serious debt crisis, hmm. especially with the devaluation of the Naira. It's moved from about 40 trillion or so to about 80 something trillion now, our debt burden in Naira, which is humongous, unbelievably humongous. So I was thinking yesterday, okay, so how are they going to Can run I this government? Can I prefer a simple solution? It's simplistic. It's idiotic. It's stupid. Okay, it shows a lack of deep thinking. But I'll tell you what it is. If we had a government that was ready for all it takes to go after Nigeria's stolen money, believe you me, there will be some relief. If you had a government that was ready that, okay, look, we don't, we don't want to feed anybody in jail. Mm. You know, that's why sometimes some of us miss governments in the past, if you get my feminism. We miss governments in the past where you could do things by decree. The amount of Nigerian money that has been stolen can turn this country around if you get just one-third of it. Look yes. at him. Look, a, a minister is on trial, has been on trial for about four, 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 I don't know how many years. He's still in the National Assembly. 90, what was it? 90 something billion or something like that. That's one individual. That's not the whole sector. Let's, the, 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 let's face it. If we had, if we, the day we would have a government that would say, look, we are going to have to do some extrajudicial things mm. to get Nigeria's money back. We have loads of billionaires, loads of them. Unfortunately, they don't set up industry, they don't set up anything. It's just to load the money. The, you had. The, the, you, did you have you forgotten the man that has forty houses? That that one that is in in jail in in, in the UK. Did you did, did you hear about the civil servant that had plenty plenty plenty? There was money? a there was a civil servant um, on, on level level twelve, I think. A woman. Yeah, a, on a level, lady, 12, yeah. level twelve. Yeah. She had an one. estate in Abuja. It's the same one I was talking about. Yeah. It's the same person. Yeah. Oh, Mongwe. No, I'm uh, Mongwe. <laughs> uh, what is this? <laughs> it, it has a whole estate. Yeah. Of about was it not eighty houses or so? Plenty. Plenty. Mm. If you have, if you the devil will have a leader, and it cannot, it cannot happen in this political dispensation, because they are all same of same to a large extent. Let's be honest with ourselves. No politician will have what you call the lever mm. to do it. But the day we have a leader <laughs> who will say, "Look, I, 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 I'm only, I don't even want a four-year term. I just need a two-year term." And I'm going after these people for our money. We just want our money back. We don't want to throw them in jail or anything. We want our money back. I would do. That's why. Why do you think people like us supported Buhari when he came out? Do you know what he did? You were hoping for something different. Do, yes, now because when he was when he was head of state, we don't know whether he's the one now, whether he's Buhari. I don't know. But when he was head of state, and we we're looking for Nigeria's money, Diko was supposed to be hiding in the UK. He put him in a crate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But boys was taking a stroll around the corner. They just grabbed him, put him in a crate, got to the airport. We are going to load him up. Unfortunately, <laughs> ah, there was dancing. That was I was proud of my country. Mm. It's a pity the Buhari that we see now. I was proud of my country in the days of why, mm. yeah, you know, grabbing everybody. These are not time for any legal legal. If you go through the legal manner, they will lock you down. They have enough resources to lock you down forever. They will even go to the West African court, go to the International Criminal Court, all kinds of things. But extrajudicial manner. If you don't do these things sometimes... But, but you know we can't, we can't do it. We can't do it. Yeah. That's why I said it's idiotic. It's, mm. uh, just allow me to rant yeah. and get this off my mind. But then again, who knows? I, I, I doubt it. I, I think that... Who knows? I think that... I'm not calling for it. I think I, 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 I'm just saying I'm not don't don't mm. nobody should think that I'm calling for something before that would make the rounds on 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 Twitter now that Jimmy doesn't know. But sometimes you get frustrated mm. and you get to the point that I've gotten to, 
having to face Nigerians every day uh, with stories like this, more pain. When, when, when I live alone, Sheriff, okay, where I live, the, 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 the generator, whatever, and what and NEPA has been combined, mm -hmm. I live alone, only me. I don't use the air conditioner during the day. I have one fridge and one freezer. I live alone, using AC only at night. I pay 20000 every week for light. Yes. Every week. Every week. You go and buy a scratch card. Let's That's combining. Com it's a service flat. Combining the two. That's every week. You're thinking about how much I have in my pocket. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, was going to say, I was going to say, I can find you better alternative. Oh, just be giving me that 20K. Uh, then what will you do? I should come and say your face. Leave that oh, my age with Jeffy. Don't let me tell the world first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think we should brace up for a very um, difficult year. Hmm. See, the government I still maintain, even if it's for symbolic reasons, have to do something to to keep people's mind at rest. The money is just not there. It exactly the, the money is not, not there. there. The money is not there. Just not there. The money is not there. Are we going to wait until we start eating ourselves? Actually, if you didn't get the better, this is not Tozo, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the next. <laughs> My God. Please don't listen to him. There's no Tozo anywhere. I'm not I'm available. Like, I'm looking like this. I'm not available. Uh, go to the market. I'm not available. <laughs> Exotic meat, yeah. Exotic meat. <laughs> Too so shady. <laughs> oh my god. Let's say, let's go to the bank newspaper, <laughs> page seven. Defective buildings. Traders lament as Lagos government demolishes Alaba market. I support the Lagos State government on this hundred percent. And all those who are trying to, you know, make some mischief to say some ethnic cleansing is a whole lot of rubbish. Any human being. Who drives along the Alaba Road here, or Idioro? So many of them are Lagos Island, Balogun. Nobody in his same mind in the first instance would have seen those buildings going up, minus the cracks. Visually, some of them don't have a staircase. You now take it, put a, some iron staircase from outside. You, you can't mm. continue to mm. live like that. Mm. If you say that it's the business of those who own the buildings, what about those who go to buy things from there? What about those who are just walking by? Oh, are you going to tell them not to walk by? We must have some discipline. And I would like the government to be resolute and not submit to any blackmail on this matter. If, if we keep harping on the government to say that we want things done, it must start from somewhere. And I am with them 100% on this. 100%. As usual, people are lamenting. Hmm. In the first place, I ask myself, how do some Nigerians feel comfortable Waking up in the morning and going to the to some of these so-called markets to trade their business. You don't need to look too far to know that this building is likely to come down. You know, so I'm glad I'm glad at what is happening. He says angry reactions um greeted. Uh the, the, you know, the demolition has been on since la last um Friday by a Lagos State Building Control Agency, last car. Mm. Yeah, I'd like them to keep at it, to keep at it. But Lagos State government, as you're doing these things, also please and for God's sake, find a solution to this traffic and environmental problem. But with this one, oh, go on, they should just go on. Yeah. Um, we have, uh, okay, you know what, let's just take this story. We're not going to talk much about them because we're out of time. Uh, race standards of journalism and pan tells NGE president as guild of editors. Anaba. Yes, Anaba. Anaba. Uh, is Anaba. Congratulations. You must find a way. You are the editors, okay? You are like the last gate before things come out. You must find a way to improve this profession. We can't continue like this. I'll have a whole one hour on it. Maybe I'll bring Eze Anaba himself to come and tell us. Uh, um, if you don't have a virile press, if you have a press that submits to brown envelope and mediocrity, your nation is gone. Mm. Gone completely. So, Ezra yeah. Naba, one more time, congratulations. We need you here. One hour, come and tell us 
What exactly? Don't worry, I'll grab him. Mm. Fantastic. Uh, grab him. That, that would be nice. Yeah. That's our show today, though. We can't go for this. Thank you so much for coming. You're Thank back you, at sir. nine. Yes. Um, um, we're doing an analysis of the um, service chiefs. Of service chiefs and okay. also the Asari Dokubo thing. Okay. The implications to the military. Mm. We're doing that at nine. All righty. I don't need to tell you who will be coming. You know, Captain Blade. Yes, now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's our show, Lagos. Um, let's take a break. Uh, we'll bring you the news at the top of the hour. After the news, we'll have former DSS Director uh, Mike Ejiofor also speak to us on the appointment of new service chiefs. Nohuri Badu as NSA and the concerns of some people and a whole lot more. Stay here. We all have that one friend that always hides everything from everyone else. Like my guy, Sheung, that got one gig free day. And I want to assume that you would run because I want to give the listeners context for the conversation. In 2019, you were running late to um, Atiku Abubakar. What did you learn then that you will not repeat this time? Yes, when is the president coming out to address us? There's a few things. One, I have a burden and a passion for young people. The fact that you have elected a man does not mean then you begin to order him around. The president will do whatever is good for the country at any given time. Mr. Adeshino, is the president responsible to the people what should the next president do to root out stakeholders who are complicit you fire them those that need to be fired are fired it's looking like the brand new chelsea attacking with so much fluidity and what can you say about that martin i know you follow chelsea quite closely i live close to the chelsea training ground that's what you mean by that i'm not <laughs> a chelsea.